to North Georgia News Now. I'm Beth Bird. Happy Earth Day. Coming up today in local news, Chairman announces Whitfield County has paid down most of its debt. Children's Advocacy Center, the greenhouse, will be returning to its original home location. Video footage has been released detailing a 2023 Murray County bus crash. A ring old man has been sentenced to 30 years after being found guilty of beating his two children. In state news, a new state law hopes to cut back on the number of squatters trespassing in Georgia homes. And a man is suing guards after a 2022 choking incident that took place in a Georgia County jail. Later, Shane Franks will share WDNN's community calendar. But first, here is your local weather. Today's local weather is brought to you by Built Well Bay. Welcome back to your local news. Whitfield County has paid down most of its debt, according to Commission Board Chairman Jevin Jensen. Jensen said the county has cut the property tax rate down to 6.2 mills, down from 8.3 mills in 2020. Jensen is one of several local officials who recently spoke at the Greater Dalton Chamber of Commerce's State of the Community Breakfast. The state of our county is strong, and I believe it is getting even stronger, Jensen said. We have a strong financial foundation. I think stronger than our surrounding counties, he added. Due to the cuts to the property tax rate, Jensen said the county took in $9.8 million less in property tax revenue from the 2021 to 2023 than it did in the preceding three years. However, the county was still able to pay down its debt, going from $30 million in 2020 down to just $1.5 million this year. The county was also able to resurface 26 miles of roads in 2023, a massive increase in comparison to 2020's 9.8 miles. In addition to road resurfacing, the county also has three sewer expansion projects underway and recently received a grant to help fund a fourth project. According to Jensen, the county has been actively pursuing grants to help complete projects without burdening taxpayers. Dalton Mayor Annalise Sams attended the event and spoke of how city officials are working to make Dalton a more physically attractive place. She mentioned the city's Spring Clean Initiative, which focuses on the area around the Matt Gaston Community Center. Sam said the city plans to expand this effort to other neighborhoods as well. Other officials spoke emphasizing the importance of SPLOS to some of the smaller cities, such as Tunnel Hill and Varnell. Varnell Mayor Tom Dixon pointed out that smaller cities such as Varnell do not have the resources that the county and city of Dalton do. He said that is why SPLOS is so important to these smaller cities. After more than five years, the greenhouse will be returning to its original location on East Morris Street. The Greenhouse is a child advocacy and sexual assault center that has been serving Whitfield and Murray County since 1995. The Greenhouse began as an outreach of the district attorney's office, established in part by interim co-chair Pam Parton, whose husband served as the DA. Parton said it is, heartening to see so it is heartening to see folks and families and organizations, large and small, step forward to support the work we do to serve our community's youngest and most vulnerable victims. In addition to being a United Way agency, the Greenhouse also receives funding from federal grants administered through Georgia's Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, contributions from local governments, and private donations. The Child Advocacy and Sexual Assault Center is operated under the direction of a board of directors and is an integral part of the multidisciplinary team that serves child victims and their families. John Carmichael, interim co-chair of Friends of the Greenhouse, said we are happy to have this opportunity to return home to the place where it all began. The Greenhouse first opened its doors at, East Morris Street, at the East Morris Street site in 1995. Now, 29 years later, we're moving back to our original quarters which have been completely renovated and updated to meet our current needs. The Greenhouse primarily provides assistance to child victims of crime, typically child molestation and physical abuse. It also helps adult, vi adult victims of sexual assault. To learn more, visit www.greenhousecasac.org. If you or someone you know is a victim of assault and you need someone to talk to, you can contact the Greenhouse's 24-hour hotline at 706-222-1147. All calls are 100% confidential. 
Video footage has been released of a school bus accident that took place in Murray County back in April of 2023. The newly released video shows students being violently tossed around inside the school bus following the crash. According to police reports, the driver of the bus, Lonnie Bruce Simpson, took his eyes off the road and the bus deered and veered into a ditch in Murray County. Simpson told investigators that a student's band instrument was moving around behind his driver's seat and he reached down to try and secure it. He then hit the ditch with the right side tires of the bus while going about 30 miles per hour. The Murray County School District states that 12 students were injured. It's a classic example of what can happen when you take your eyes off the road for a split second, said Kyle Coaster, who is serving as the attorney for the family of a student injured in the crash. The attorney said his particular client required surgery after suffering from a torn labrum, a torn ligament in her hip, and significant lacerations. She hit the ceiling in the bus, then came back down and landed hard on the seat in front of her, and then ended up in the aisle, said Coaster. The student's family received $805,000 from the Murray County School District's insurance company. In a statement, the school district said it regrets the accident and that children were injured. We are pleased the matter has been resolved, the statement read. A wrinkled man has been convicted of cruelty to children following a three-day trial. 24-year-old Dylan Michael Tennant appeared before a Catoosa County jury last week in relation to an incident that reportedly took place in March of 2023. At the time, Tennant was living with his parents, brother, and his two children at a home in the Rossville area. Officials state that while at home, Tennant became enraged while supervising his children, a two-year-old son and a three-year-old daughter, due to a mess they had made in their room. The district attorney's office stated that Tennant hit the children repeatedly over the course of two days, even using a board to hit his two-year-old son. Tennant left the home and took the children to a friend's house in an attempt to hide the injuries he had inflicted on the children from his family. Tennant returned with the children days later. The district attorney said the children's grandparents and uncle noticed bruising on the children and contacted police regarding potential abuse. Tennant initially de denied the allegations and accused another family member of leaving the bruises. Witnesses from the Department of Family and Children's Services stated that the bruising was some of the worst they had ever seen. Tennant was convicted on Wednesday of two counts of cruelty to children in the first degree. He was sentenced to 30 years with the first 15 to be served in confinement in the Georgia Department of Corrections. This child abuser will have plenty of time to clean his room in the Department of Corrections, said District Attorney Clayton Fuller. Tennant is prohibited from having any contact with his children and is not permitted to have unsupervised contact with any minor under the age of 18. When we return, I'll share some state news. Stay with us. Welcome back. Next up, recently, there's been a rise in the number of reports of squatters, trespassers who seize control of vacant homes. Atlanta has been at the center of national conversations about the practice. Georgia lawmakers are hopeful that changes to state laws could uproot squatters. In March, lawmakers passed House Bill 1017, also referred to as the Georgia Squatters Reform Act. The act makes it easier for homeowners and landlords to remove people who are staying on their property without permission. Devin Sebaugh, a Marietta Republican who is sponsoring the bill and said the legislation will fix antiquated laws that protect squatters. Right now, squatters are treated like tenants of a property and they're not tenants. They're criminals and they're intruders, Sebaugh said. Without the legislation, supporters say it will be difficult for homeowners to eject people who enter vacant properties, change locks, and claim ownership or tenancy. According to Seaball, the proposed legislation will make it quicker and easier for landlords and homeowners to gain back their control gain back control of their property. The National Rental Home Council has tracked around 1,200 recent complaints of trespassing in the Atlanta area alone. House Bill 1017 will amend current Georgia law relating to criminal trespass, property, and damage proceedings against people who intrude on others' property. The bill would cite people accused of unlawful squatting, giving them three business days to show a lease, rental agreement, or proof of rental payments. If they produce documentation, a magistrate judge will will set a hearing within seven days to determine if the documents are authentic. Squatters could be charged with a misdemeanor and face a fine of up to $1,000 and up to one year in jail, or both. If squatters are found using a fake lease, they could also be charged with a felony of filing false documents. Those in opposition of the bill fear that it will protect absentee landlords and make it easier for landlords to evict tenants. Housing expert and law professor Brandon Weiss called the bill a distraction from the housing affordability cri crisis including soaring rent and home prices. The bill now awaits Governor Kemp's approval and signature. Three, 
A man is suing Georgia jail officers after they failed to intervene in a choking incident. Tremar Harris, a 37-year-old South Georgia jail detainee, has filed a federal lawsuit against three Appling County guards who says did not do enough to intervene while he was tied to a restraining chair and choked from behind with a chain. The incident happened in an Appling County jail back in January of 2022. Harris, who had initially been pulled over for driving with defective equipment, had been in jail for two days after being charged with possessing drug-related objects. According to the lawsuit, Harris was fastened to a restraining chair while in solitary confinement. Harris managed to get an arm free, which prompted the guards to return to the cell. Harry Daniels, who is representing Harris, stated that his client was strapped in the chair in a padded room and did not pose a threat to himself nor anyone else. Harris was choked from behind with choked from behind with a chair, which was from an unused leg restraint. The three other officers looked on while Harris was being choked, but did nothing to intervene, according to Daniels. These three officers had a legal and moral duty to protect Tremar Harris, but they did nothing, he said. William Rents, the guard accused of committing the choke, was terminated after the incident and has been charged with aggravated assault, battery, and a violation of oath of office. Harris's representation provided a full five-minute video of the incident in which the choking occurs. At the moment Rents performed the choke, footage shows none of the other guards appearing to react or say anything, and then all four guards walk out of the cell. Per the suit, the other three guards had the ability, opportunity, skill, and time to prevent and immediately stop Officer Rents, but deliberately selected to stand by and watch, it states. The lawsuit seeks a range of damages in an unspecified amount. Also, as a reminder, today is Earth Day, so be sure to recycle, repurpose, or reuse objects to do your part in keeping the Earth just a little bit cleaner. When we return, Shane Franks will share WGNN's community calendar. But first, here's a look at the obituaries. It's time for WDNN's community calendar. Here are some things that are going around in your area. The Cro Crossroads Car and Box Show is coming to Ringgold on Saturday, April 27th. Located at the Colonnade on 264, Catoosa Circle. This event invites all car, truck, Jeep, and motorcycle enthusiasts to enter the show. The event will begin at 9 a.m. and will run until 3 p.m. and is free for all spectators. This event will have numerous vehicles, food vendors, raffles, prizes, auctions, and much, much more. For those wishing to register their vehicle info, the show, or to learn more information, email crossroadsunity at gmail.com today. The Creative Arts Guild, located at 520 West Wall Street, will host Art and Soul with a Sculpture Garden Stroll on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The event will have uh, brunch, live music by Soul Candy, raffles, a cork pull-in celebration of International Sculpture Day and in support of our arts and education programs. Tickets are $60. For more information, call 706-278-0168 or visit www.creativeartsguild or the uh, Guild's Facebook page to learn more. Dalton State College's Department of Communication and Theater is presenting their comedic spring musical, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee on April 26th and 27th at 7.30 p.m. Located at 650 College Drive in the Good Row Auditorium, the play is about uh, a facetious spelling bee focusing on six children contestants and four audience guest spellers. The musical will cost $12 and is directed by Kim Crail, who also notes that the musical contains some language and adult innuendo, which may not be suitable for younger children. To learn more or to purchase tickets, email kcorrell at daltonstate.edu today. 
Dalton State College is hosting a community celebration for Dr. John Foucault's uh, inf investiture as the college's sixth president, located at 101 South Hamilton Street. The free concert opens on April 25th at 6.30 with Murphy Givens, <clears throat> followed by the main act of the duo Smith & Wesley. Food trucks will be on site, so bring your lawn chairs or blankets and enjoy this family-friendly event. To learn more about this event, you can uh, look up marketing at daltonstate.edu today. If you'd like to submit information on your event for North Georgia News Now's community calendar, send an email to info at wdnntv.com. That's it for this edition of North Georgia News Now. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for watching Local. God bless. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification so you won't miss any new videos. Also, follow us on our social medias. Thank you again for tuning in, and until next time, keep watching local.